what's going on everybody it's childish we're back at it again coming at you with another video for skylanders ring of hero it has been not even 24 hours and we just got the big update drop from comp to us introducing the hall of chaos so i have gathered one of my good friends and fellow twitch streamers for the skylanders community asian zc's to help us out with a couple of tips for you all in order to get you started on this dungeon real real quick here asian zc how are you doing today man I'm doing well, Rajavish. Thank you for having me on this collaboration. It's a pleasure to have you, my man. As you already know, we talked about it a little bit on the side. I love collaborations because we get a lot of smarter people than me on our channel to help you guys out, get you uh, caught up when it comes to progression here. So the Hall of Chaos, it just got introduced. Uh, we have two new dungeons, the Standard Dungeon as well as the Extreme Dungeon that can drop for us some really nice items. For a Standard one, we have the Cubes. Uh, for specific elements in addition to the three star uh new fragments for the bosses right the new villains and then for the extreme dungeons i believe we have a chance to get ourselves some uh new shards some regular shards out there so let's go ahead and talk about you okay let us know how did you get involved into the twitch community when it comes to skylanders how long have you been playing these games so i've been playing some of the war a little bit of background about me i've been playing some of the war about five years now um when this game was uh, officially announced, I thought, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna give this game a try. So just been streaming since uh, the launch and I'm one of the top players in, uh, in this game. Um, every week uh, I put in, I'm currently level 49. I'm in the guild called Ascension. We finish around top 50 every week. And hopefully uh, I'm I'm completely free to play and I make uh, content for just the free to play uh, player base. Which, which is the bigger part of the free, yeah, the bigger part of the community. So I'm actually really excited for this because as you guys know that follow me on YouTube, um, there is a ton of uh, different options, different things you can do in this game. I feel like it's, it's like a, I got the daily chats that never ends, right? So we brought you on board to kind of give us that, that uh, narrow minded way of thinking so that we can go ahead and, uh, figure out what we got to do in order to take full advantage of this Hall of Chaos. So let's start out with the standard dungeon, okay? What is your number one tip uh, to get us rolling with that? So for the standard um, dungeon, uh, we want to really focus on one type of element of cubes. For instance, uh, if you want to power up like Boomer, um, you want to focus on fire or magic cube, for instance, like this one right here. This is fire and magic cube, right? So we want to do something along focusing on that. And if you want secondary, if you want to get the villain you want, if you want pepper jacks, then you would do a fire magic pepper jack dungeon. But then one thing you need to keep in mind is you want to pick a bonus element because right here on the bonus element right here, um, you do get a 50% attack defense and hp advantage so it will help you clear this content uh this dungeon a lot quicker so for example right here you it's a fire bonus dungeon if i'm using fire dps monsters then this will help me clear this level a lot easier gotcha and so when it comes to like the standard dungeon like i said we got the option of specific hues in addition to getting a specific three-star villain so um, if you had the optimal choice, right, you're going to be looking for that uh, that cube that you're looking for for the right element in addition to the villain that you're w looking to work on. Let's say that's not an option here. Do you, Are you going to be one uh, to recommend for the free-to-play community to focus on uh, the cube versus the three-star villain? Or w which one would you go for as a priority? I would focus on the uh, cube because um, I think the, um, the talent the talent uh, skill up is more important than the villain because even if you summon the villain you still have to invest in the skill ups and majority of the community already skilled up uh, broccoli guy and a lot of these villains really overlap sure and due to skill up limitations unless you're buying a bunch of packs on skill up packs there isn't really a point in investing in a new villain when you already leveled up broccoli guy to let's just say five level or six level you know 
Right, right, right. And one thing that you mentioned, I don't know if it's just the extreme dungeon uh, when we were off camera, but when it comes to these dungeons, uh, you know, even if we can't clear, the the farther we can get on it means we're going to get a little bit more rewards, like when it comes to shards or whatnot. Um, I know we're kind of jumping the gun when it comes to the extreme dungeon, but for standard dungeon, is that the same? Is that the same mechanic there? I uh, I think it is. Um, but the the standard dungeon is fairly easy, so okay. I wouldn't worry too much. But the the bonus elemental will really help if okay. you are really lacking in you know. Um, a lot of DPS on your unit and a lot less further in in progression. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, because that, that's what I was figuring. Like, I mean, I, I think the biggest takeaway on that is to try to see if you can match your damage uh, damage dealers with the bonus element. That's something that I really didn't pick up early on when I first got started because I was just like testing it out and having some fun. But as we're gonna get into in the extreme dungeon, you're trying to do everything in your power to get as far as possible so you can get as many shards as possible. So keep that in mind, guys, as we talk about this next topic here. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it here. Extreme dungeons, hit us up with a reality check for people out there that are free to play, have like four six-star units and are wondering why they cannot clear this as easy as a standard dungeon just give it to him real now so um for uh when i first uh, did the extreme dungeon this dungeon i did not expect it to be extremely tough when i say extreme i'm an end game i'm pretty much pretty i'm pretty ruined um i didn't clear it so go into this without the expectation of clearing it at all uh if you do clear it more power to you you're either a beast, a huge whale, or you have some insane runes. So um, for uh, those are probably the top 0.0001%. And those, I more props to those guys. Right, 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 right. And here's the crazy thing about the, the dungeons that I, I didn't even realize because I haven't had the option to do it. Um, for those that uh, haven't taken a look at the notes already, when it comes to the standard dungeons, you're gonna get five entries uh, for you to get started out here. But the extreme dungeon, you only have three, right? So in this one, since you can get your shards, you know, we probably just thought, oh yeah, we're seeing all these different Nat 4 Skylanders. Um, but believe it or not, guys, you can actually have a Nat 5 dungeon open and get yourself those legendary shards that you need to either summon or potentially, uh, you know, power up one of the Nat 5 Skylanders that you're looking for here. So um, for, for somebody that's free to play, um, obviously Nat 5, uh, shards seem very, very nice to do, but uh, are you going to go? Is that what you're trying to do? Are you just saying, hey, I'm just going to do the Nat 5s, or am I just going to do units that I'm focused on, like Nat 4 ones that I'm focused on? What, what's your kind of plan of action there? So um, so a lot of the free-to-play players, um, there is Nat 5 that you could potentially pick. Uh, if, you, if I go down this list right now, there is only one Nat 5, but even the Nat 5s, there is um, priorities. Uh, I'm sure everyone to see um the priority should be the ellen uh light and dark those are more rare um of course those should be your first most priority and then second should be the the nat 5 that you are trying to focus on building so um mm -hmm. if you see that you you want to find if you see that in some that someone that have that um in a channel that you're in and you really need that you're gonna have to ask, hey, can I add you? Let me, let me, you, because potentially ten shards is a lot. Yeah. Um, compared to, you can only request one shard per day in the guild request. Mm -hmm. Ten shard, the maximum amount that you could get for clearing, is absolutely insane. Right, that's right. borderline broken. I would say, um, that's ten day of work saved for you. Um, even even the arena Omni gems is two to one ratio. You're getting like almost literally twenty piece of Omni gems conversion, which is I think is pretty for the amount of effort you're putting in. Sure. Yeah. Just to hey, I I have that, and you just have to go in and try and try to clear it. And when you're targeting these nap fives, um. It, by the time you enter these stages, um, by the time, if, even if you get to the second stage, the second stage is pretty hard already. Um, if you could clear that, then you're pretty good. But if you don't, you almost minimum guarantee five shards. Gotcha. 
Okay. Some of the mechanics also when you're fighting the bosses, uh, you want to swap out the teams. Okay. It's similar to Mirage Tower, um, where if you swap out the teams, um, your your team heals. So um, keep that in mind. Um, and I would also bring a healer and cleanser because the fight it's really long. The fight that I went into the extreme dungeon, I fought the whole five minute. Um, I was only able to chip the boss down to only a, a third of his HP mm -hmm. or almost to a half. So it, you expect you expect a drawn out fight. If you right. go in using a full YOLO team, you're probably gonna wipe on wave two, like stage two of the boss. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend uh, bringing a healer. Okay. So, uh, so definitely your whirlwinds, your deja vu, like jet back. Gotcha. So, and that's what I was just about to ask you. Like, what are obviously there's some people out there that have followed, you know, a lot of different content creators or recommendations and whatnot. As far as like your typical, you know, start out the game, build your, you know, uh, kaboom, your enigma, your stealth, health, whatever. Not a lot of people were focused on healers, maybe outside of like a hot dog, if they weren't super lucky with like a, like a like a really strong support unit. But like for you, outside of those three units, um, could you recommend? Uh, out of one of those, let's say if, uh, if the free to play community is watching right now and they're like, what is going to be uh, my number one best option for a free to play player to potentially build for this dungeon? Which which one of those uh, support or healer cleansers you would recommend and why? I would highly recommend Whirlwind because okay. it's um, you could awaken plus five, six star. It's you, you can farm it up in if you're extremely hardcore player, you could get it in two days. Um, if it takes a week, um, that's also fine. So, um, and you don't really need skill ups for a whirlwind. Um, you get a good cleanse and you get some heal. Um, gotcha. Okay, sounds good. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about that we hit up uh, a little bit earlier in the video, um, you know, the introduction of talents, um, you know, for the standard dungeon and uh, the cubes that we can obtain, right? Um, you know, when I think about most of the free-to-play players and the common mistakes they made, um, we see these cubes, we like them, we get them, and we just are like, oh, I got 14 different Skylanders, but I just want to put a little bit here and there into all of them. But um, as we've talked about, you know, uh, previously, you provided a lot of educational uh, content for me, uh, you know, throughout your uh, streaming or whatnot, you know, one of the things that you've recommended to your community um, is really, you know, consolidation of, you know, the units that you're working on the runes and now kind of moving forward to this Hall of Chaos, you know, now we have to focus on specific, uh, you know, units and abilities that we want to uh, put into the talents uh, or put your, your cubes into the talents on. Is that correct? Correct. So, um, like we previously said, uh, for the um, dungeons, uh, since we're focusing on one element of cubes, uh, we will also uh, focus on one specific elements for talents also. So for instance, if you were farming the fire and magic cubes, we will scale up either only fire type monsters or magic type monsters. And and you might ask, hey, what, what talent tree should we focus on since there's two, right? Right. There is the adventure or dual um, tree. So if you're mainly focusing on PVE and so you you just want to PVE all day, you're not going to be dabbing into um, PVP much uh, down the road. Uh, I would highly recommend doing the adventure. Mm -hmm. And but if you're heavily focused on PVP arena or down the road, hopefully uh, guild ward content, then by all means do the dual talent side. Gotcha, gotcha. So <laughs> ideally. I would focus on when you're clicking on one of these. Um, I would focusing. I will focus on the offense skill ups because you you might ask why. Well, the more the more faster that you clear content or you delete the enemy, unless there is for RNG or the AI for to screw up in PVE or PVP. So majority of player currently use a lot of the bomb units. And, right, right. And the attacks, attack up, skill up is probably the most optimal, I would say, because then you you kill the enemy quite faster, less RNG. Right. That. 
Right. And then when you think about it, like for some of us that are still working on trying to get those three star clears and again, it's super, super close um, to that three minutes there. Um, obviously, that's going to help you out now. Um, one of the things that we got a chance to talk about, you know, again, prior to the recording is that um, you've actually already, you know, collected a fair amount of um, uh, a fair amount of cubes and have, have already put forth some of those into your tax. So uh, what's your thoughts on how it scales, uh, you know, overall? So um, I did a few skill ups. Um, I tried uh, a, f a fair amount of a different element. I did I did some life earth. I did some fire and magic, and I also did some water and tech. Um, the skill ups are the numbers are for attacks. Level one is fifteen. Level two is thirty one. Okay. Level three is forty six, and level four is sixty two. So they scale basically they almost similar so basically either plus 15 or plus 16 so far and and the cube cost goes up a, quite a bit as you scale them up so if you want to spread out the elements i would recommend I, you can do that but i think it's probably better to focus on one specific type if i have to redo it again Gotcha. And so taking a look at the event overall for the Hall of Chaos, I want to kind of offer the floor to you as I'm sure we're going to have some uh, some of our great listeners over there at Comp to us checking it out here. Um, your overall opinion about the dungeon and if there was maybe one or two things to change about it, what would it be and why? So I think right now, currently, it is the, the amount of time, the entry amount, I think, are good but i wish we, there's more chance of of entering them sure. because right now after doing the five friendly uh friend dungeons you almost basically have to go back to just farming to try to unlock the stage again mm -hmm. and i think a lot of the player base isn't gonna be able to look at it i mean to be able to grind nonstop in order to rediscover these dungeons, right. I wish I wish there was um, more chance of them just dropping, sure. or there should be like a how do you say it? more chance of you getting them. Because I've been farming all day, I only discovered like two, so um, and that's over like five hundred to a thousand gems. So that's, yeah, the chances of discovering is pretty low. Okay, and how about the limitations from like the standard to the extreme? Do you feel that it needs to be more, or given the fact that you can get up to ten legendary shards, um, if they go for you know any more than that, maybe that would be too much um, or devalue the actual net buys. What do you think about that? I think right now um, three entry is I think is pretty great for the free to play mm -hmm. community if you utilize it um, efficiently. Okay, um, but. The difficulty of the dungeon is fairly hard to in order to get the ten shards. It's almost near impossible. Right. Right now, I, I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's really hard for the uh, free to play folks. So I think it is at a good spot right now. Okay. Good deal. Well, I have some fun questions for you that I just kind of want to know off the topic here. Um, Obviously, you already know uh, how focused we need to all be when it comes to the NAF Five Dungeons. Um, out of all the ones that have uh, that you're that are available to you right now, which one is like the one you're working on? Um, and is it for PvP or is it just you know you want to do quicker clears for PvE? What what are you currently working on? Uh, per currently working on I right now. If I have the choice based on my list, or is it just in general? Yeah, just in general. So, in general, I am trying to work on free-to-play units. Uh, I am, the NAF 5 I'm working on is Wildstorm. I get that from uh, Arena. Okay. I buy that out weekly since I am uh, I do all my gears, I'm top 50. So, um, yeah. I get all 18 pieces. I get all the uh, Omni gems from the, um, from the uh, shop, Arena shop. And then I also am gunning for tri-tip. It's in our guild shop. So okay. that's also 30 pieces that we could get almost up to per week. So I've been doing tri-tip. It's another free to play Nat 5. And then I've been also requesting 
those uh, wild storm from my guild leads also. Gotcha. Cool, cool. And uh, you know, one of the things that you you may note here about the like Nat Five dungeons, um, you know, obviously a lot of us have been playing for uh, you know almost what seven eight weeks now, and so we've been collecting a lot of, a lot of legendary uh, shards, right? Legendary fragments that we can use to summon uh, uh, units after we after we get our first fifty. Um, now with the opportunity to get those uh, LND Nat Fives. Um, out of the ones that are currently available in the game, if you had to recommend, say, hey, free to put players out there, out of all the LD ones that are available, if you wanted to invest um, your extra Omni gems into it, which one, like of the LD Nat Fives, would you go for and why? I would have to be for the light. I have to go with Astro Blast, six second cooldown. I get, I have, I still have nightmares. Um, getting deleted by Astro Blast, um, six second cooldown AOE skill. Gotcha. Um, that is borderline the most broken skill in this game, um, and it's there's, there's nothing else I can say. <laughs> well, well, how about chain reaction? Though doesn't doesn't chain reaction have that three second cooldown? That's like super OP or what? Yes, um, that three second cooldown is really OP. Um, another whale player, Magaric, have tested that. Um, the scaling isn't as great, and actual blast being a neutral monster, um, you are almost guarantee that you're doing full damage to everyone and you also get that passive where if you kill a dark unit you instantly get a cooldown so you basically astral blast opener with the spitfire passive you almost guarantee doing like 10,000 damage AOV on everyone so I think that's not fair so but it is what it is. Gotcha. And then another monster I would highly recommend is um, Starcast. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of high arena players using Spitfire lead with the Starcast. Um, six second cooldown AFE skill with 50% right. ignore defense. Right. Even with the current um, runes that we have, um, I've seen a Starcast one shotting all my 10,000 HP units. So in a six second opener, I think that's pretty broken too. So scaling that up would make that unit super OP also. Gotcha, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I was always curious about that, so I wanted to do. Now, we talked a little bit about um, PVP there. Um, since we did it, uh, why don't we go ahead and open up into that current arena event that we got going on now. We can obtain 40 points a day uh, for the next two weeks here. So we're gonna be able to get 560 uh, points or so. Um, some of the choices that we got available are going to be nat threes and nat fours. Now, let me ask you this. Um, obviously, some other people are going to be working on specific units, so they'll go for ones over another. But uh, if you had the choice, I mean, is it just going to be, yeah, go for the nat four? Or do you say, hey, I see Boomer in there. Um, let me make that a priority. Or I see another three star unit. Let me make that priority. What, what, what's your take on this event? What do you want to do? So, since we have 560 points total out of the uh, 14 days, I will, so either you could buy 14 nat 4s or 22 nat 3s. Okay. Um, I, if, it, if I had the choice, uh, I would highly recommend getting the nat 4s since these are all boss stages and those are limited entry and you get a limited amount of shards. Gotcha. Whereas the nat 3 and the nat 2s on this list, those are all farm, uh, farmable units and I don't think you need to waste all your um, precious points that you earn per day on yeah. this. Yeah, right on. Yeah, because I was curious. I mean, we're, we're going to be doing, you know, our gears anyways just to kind of clear and get ourselves like the daily rewards and stuff like that. And, and of course, the Omni Gems every single week in addition to the Nat 5 Skylines that are available if they're going for that. So um, we're going to be able to collect that and, and take advantage of that. Uh, so I was curious about that. But um, as far as the overall content goes, uh, thank you so much for providing the uh, information here on the Hall of Chaos. Uh, once again, guys, if you have not got a chance to check out ZC already, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below so you can go ahead and stop on by. He literally is getting ready to stream uh, just in a couple of minutes at the time of this recording here. It's super late right now, but he's a Pacific uh, Coast streamer um, that makes a really, really good content on Twitch. I encourage you guys to go ahead and check it out. Any last words you want to share with the community, boss? Yes, uh, thank you, Charles, for having me. Thank you for collabing with me with this on this video. Uh, I'm usually streaming 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. You guys uh, feel free to ch check that out um, on Twitch. I stream almost every day. Okay. Um, I'm one of those daily grinders. Um, yes. 
help just drop by and say hi Right, yeah, and 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 in this day and age, right now, with you know the limited amount of content we got, I think this is the perfect time for some of you guys that are checking us out on YouTube. Come stop by on Twitch. A lot of the questions that you generally ask in the comment section down below, sometimes I answer them within an hour, sometimes it's like a day, right? So if you have the chance to log in and just you know hang out with us when we're streaming over there, we can get your questions answered as soon as possible. Because as you guys already know, all we're doing is simply grinding right now. The grind never stops, as we would say. So. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it guys. Thanks again for, uh, you know, showing your support and watching this video. If you did enjoy this video in any way, shape or form, please give it a thumbs up and we will see you both all in the next one. Take care.